We start with the reference form T1, like the T1 we know and love, 9.95 liters, CNC anodized aluminum, and superb build quality. We still get that with the reference T1, but with some caveats. We no longer have the dual chamber sandwich style layout, but arguably a more streamlined reference design. With that, we also lose a massive amount of GPU support, but that improves CPU clearance up to 115 millimeters. You still get side radiator support, vented side panels, supports the same 2.1 T1 accessories, iTex motherboards, SFX and SFXL power supplies. Because we're dedicating this build to video editing, we're going with the Intel Ultra 7 265K, eight performance cores and 12 efficiency cores. Intel's iconic QuickSync technology for hardware accelerated tasks, specifically decoding H.265 422 10 bit footage, something that current AMD chips fall short on. Plus, at 280 to 300 US dollars, it's a fantastic deal. The Ultra 7 pairs extremely well with the ASUS ROG Strix B860i. Clean, minimal, with more than decent connectivity options, PCIe 5.0, Wi Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and 20 gigabit USB. Honestly, one of my favorite 800 B series boards. We have 64 gigabytes of XMP optimized memory from G Skill, the low profile Rip Jaws S5, clocked at 6400 mega transfers. Just enough for video editing and a couple of Chrome tabs. Since I typically recycle relevant footage from prior projects, I need adequate fast local storage. We have two 2 terabyte Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSDs from Oracle, the IG740 Pro. While not Gen 5, it still offers extremely fast read and write speeds with sequential read speeds up to 7,400 megabytes per second. The BA60i has two M.2 SSD slots. While the front Gen 5 slot has a passive heatsink, the rear slot is locked to Gen 4 with no cooling. With four terabytes of storage, this should be more than enough before projects find their final resting place on my Synology NAS. Because we have more CPU clearance up to 115 millimeters, we can go big with the Noctua L12S77. Compared to the normal L12S, more memory compatibility. With that extra height, we can actually swap out the 15 millimeter fan to the bigger, quieter NF81225 Pro Max. For now, we set this to the side. Between the front and rear panel, the rear panel looks the most jarring, especially if you've never seen the reference T1 before. Vents on the rear meant to assist in the airflow, cutouts for the two slot GPU are only option in the reference kit with a maximum height of 112 millimeters. The front panel is relatively unchanged, two cutouts for your power button and an optional USB-C port. The only change is the bracket needed to fasten the support strut in. The top and bottom panels are completely the same as the sandwich T1. Case assembly is incredibly simple. Four flathead screws bond the front and rear panel to the back plate a modified side panel, four additional screws and standoffs mount the motherboard, and two more for the PSU bracket. Rigidity isn't a concern. It feels very secure. Now we can fasten down our assembled board and our power supply, the Corsair SF850 SFX Platinum Power Supply. I also picked up the 1000 watt version, which I reserved for something a bit more power thirsty. 850 watts is more than enough, especially for the 265K and the RTX 5070 Founders Edition. I could probably get away with a 600 or 750 watt unit. I'm using these custom cables from my DIY. These are the premium silver wire cables. I actually prefer stiffer, thinner cables. It's tougher to manage, but it's not as clunky as softer braided cables. The Founders 5070 we're using checks most of the boxes. With a height of 112 millimeters and the angled 16 pit connector, spec wise, it's bittersweet. At 250 watts, it's still power hungry, and with only 12 gigs of VRAM, it leaves more to be desired. 16 gigs should be the absolute minimum in 2025. We do get those sixth generation HEVC decoders, adding support for H.265, 422, and 444 10 bit decoding. One of the main reasons to stick with NVIDIA for video editing. Combine that with Intel's QuickSync, and this is the optimized pairing if you film and compress H.264 or 5. You can invert the T1 or go with the standard bottom mounted GPU setup. I elected for the inverted setup because it favors GPU thermals. Because we also get the side mounted radiator brackets, mounting two side exhaust fans makes sense. The A1225 Chromex fans are really quiet. Formed also sent over their AIO top hat. Whether you're a fan of the design or not, there's little to debate regarding their usefulness. 
I'd even go as far to say that this top hat is more practical and useful than the T-Grill. Compatible with the stock feet, fan rails for 15mm fans and space for 2.5 inch SSDs, Form claimed this can also expand GPU support beyond two slots. Aside from the top hat, Form sent over their vented glass panel which looks stunning. It feels nice as well. The vents are actually T-shaped and embedded in a unique and clever way. You could also buy vented glass panels for the T1 and other cases on the Etsy marketplace. Let's talk about noise and performance. I had to reduce the 15mm slim fan speed. The blade's proximity to the top of the top hat creates turbulence. I find that 25% fan speed renders them silent. The CPU and side fans have a lot more freedom. For a total silent build, I have those set to 50%. Both the 265K and the 5070FE idle at 40 to 44 degrees. The 265K maxes out at 65 degrees during editing sessions. The 5070 barely sweats, no more than 50 degrees. I don't game all that often, but I had a chance to sit down with the Call of Duty Black Ops 7 beta. In 4K DLSS native and frame generation, we see the 265K fluctuate between 84 and 95 degrees. The 5070 wasn't sweating nearly as much, but we do see temps between 64 and 70 degrees, with performance ranging between 85 and 115 frames per second. This is with the system's fan spinning around 50% or 1100 RPM. I really do love the way this turned out. My previous editing rig was in the Fractal Terra. While that case is also beautiful, there's just something about the T1 that keeps me coming back. It's built like a tank, no flex or panel gaps. There are some downsides. Less GPU compatibility overall. You do lose some liquid cooling support, though you still have the side radiator bracket. Nonetheless, a fantastic option if you like the T1's design, but want a much more simpler build experience. Currently, the reference T1s are in stock on Form's website. To build this exact system, it'll set you back 22 to 2400 US dollars. You can get a full breakdown of the products mentioned in this video in the video's description, along with affiliate links if you wish to support this channel further. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching.